Did you ever hear about Graxpert? It's a gradient removal tool. And no worry if you haven't heard about it because with SPCC and Blur Exterminator and there was so much going on in the last time that this might just have slipped your radar. But now you're here and that's great and I will tell you everything about it right after the intro. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So about two weeks ago, while binge YouTubing, I was actually stumbling over a video of a German astrophotographer who has a much bigger channel on YouTube than I have. His name is Frank Sackenheim and his channel is Astrophoto Colonia. And he talks in this video about a gradient removal software that he and his friends actually created, which is called Gregspert. Now, after watching his tutorial, I was quite intrigued and also interested, and I downloaded the software, and I will show you in a minute what it actually can do. And I think there are two thresholds that we have to look at. The first threshold is equal as good as DBE dynamic background extraction within PixInsight. And I think this threshold is especially interesting for everybody who doesn't have PixInsight. And then the second threshold is obviously, is it better than PixInsight? So should I actually do the gradient removal within Graxpert and only then start my workflow within PixInsight? So let's go now to my computer and I'll show you the software and I will also do this test so that you see if it's worth actually trying it out. Okay, and here we are on my computer for once not in PixInsight, but in Graxpert. So I already loaded an image. You can do that here with load image. At the moment it's not stretched, that's why it's black. And I can now stretch it. I have four different strengths. We can just go to something regular like this here, and here it looks still kind of okay-ish, but if we actually go to a full stretch, which would be equal in PixInsight, like the hyper stretch, you see that it's really ugly, ugly, ugly. And I actually used this picture for another video where I did, where I actually showed how I was able to do something decent out of it. But the gist there was that I, wasn't able in PixInsight to kind of get this gradient out. And at the end, what I did in an act of desperation, I just used the star exterminator to extract the stars and practically only utilize the stars afterwards to get this cluster and just discard the background. But that's obviously a very bad choice. So that's the story with PixInsight. I was not able to do it. And let's use now this ugly pick to see what we can do with Graxpert. And with that, I can also very nicely explain you how to use it. And if you know dynamic background extraction in PixInsight, this is very intuitive. So you can also create samples. If I just click here somewhere, a sample appears. That is exactly the same as in PixInsight. But I have something really cool here if I click on this flooded generation. If I now click on this gradient here, it creates samples wherever it feels that the gradient is about the same as where I clicked. So if I click up here, I get some up here because it's right extreme. If I get to the very dark, it creates them here and so on. So this makes it really, really easy, also manually to create samples. What I do not have here, what I have in PixInsight, is a view of the samples. The other option that I have is I create a grid in the same way also that I could do it in DBE and PixInsight. I can tell how many points I want per row, given that this is extremely complex. I will use the maximum 25. I can choose a grid tolerance. The higher the tolerance, the more it actually goes into whatever, into nebulas, into the, the stars, the lower I go the more it tries to stay within the background. I increase this now given that my gradient really goes from a very bright to a very dark spectrum. And I just create now create grid. And here I have my grid. 
So what I have to do now, I have to move the ones which are too close by the cluster away. That's it. That's like this here. So I move it somewhere. This one here and this one here. I think that's already about okay. The other issue that I have that even I put a high tolerance in there up here, it <laughs> thought that's too bright. And now because I have this flooded generation, if I just click now in here, you will see it immediately gives me a lot of samples also in this area. So now I'm actually fine. I have samples all over. I have three different interpolation methods which I can use. And what Frank tells in his tutorial is that this, the Kringing, is the most advanced one. Also takes the most calculation power, the longest time to calculate, but it should be the best. By the way, I will leave a link to the tutorial of Frank in the description below. And also obviously the link where you can download it. So the smoothing is exactly the same as in PixInsight. If you have a soft gradient, then you can actually smooth it out. If you have like here, these abrupt changes, you have actually to use the smoothing factor, a very low one, like I do now here. My feeling is that it works pretty well with the standard settings here, but if you want, you can choose advanced and here you have more choices. You can change the sample size, the sample color. You can do some changes here with the interpolation method and so on. And you can also change as in Pixel Insight from subtraction to division. So let's run it, calculate background. Okay, and here we have it in a processed form. So the cool part is I can now take the points away and we can actually look at the background, what it extracted, quite heavy. And now we can switch between the original and the processed one, which is now quite even. Obviously this still looks terrible, but when we actually go now to a usual stretch factor, then this is now something we can deal with. So I can now save this picture. And the cool part is that I can actually save it as an XISF. So the correct PIX inside format is supported. So I save the processed picture. And now we can actually go in PIX inside. So we, here we have it now, the picture in PIX inside. We can hyper stretch it. And we see also here nicely what it has done well and what it could still not manage. I think these circles, probably some dust, whatever. This obviously was not completely removed. Otherwise, we see a rather uniform background. And let's see now what PixInsight has done. And I already did that before to save time here. I already used the dynamic background extraction once in division mode and one in subtraction mode, practically with the same settings to make it fair. Okay, and here we have them now. So the lower one here is subtractions. So the same as Graxpert has done. And the upper one is division. But there's actually from these two, there's not a big difference. So I will just work here with subtraction. And when we look at it from this point of view, we see that actually these circles, they're much less pronounced here in Graxpert. They're not completely gone here, but they're less pronounced. But what is much more interesting is here the middle, where DBE could not really remove or equal out the gradient close to the cluster, Graxpert was able to do that. And when we now look at the right side, the difference is even much more surprising. Here, practically, it evened everything fine out, Graxpert. And when we look at DBE, it still has these huge blotches also here, where it's absolutely not equaled out. Also here, also here. You see it all over. So in this probably worst case scenario, Graxpert has actually done a much better job than PixInsight. And again, before I get slaughtered, <laughs> I don't suggest that in every situation, Graxpert is better. And the reason that I use such an extreme combination is because, and I have tried it before with standard situation, there is no difference at all. These two softwares work exactly the same. You really need to use such extreme examples to see a difference. And 
I, it's probably not every day, I hope, when we run into such challenging situations. So, but just to show, Graxpert might help you in situations where DBE fails. So I think that was quite interesting what we just experienced. And given that the software is for free, this is really amazing what these guys have done. Now, what is my personal takeaway and what will I do with it? Personally, I'm pretty happy most of the times with what PixInsight has to offer. So in most cases, I will probably stay within PixInsight as it's just easier. But knowing that there's a tool which might be of help for these cases where I have trouble in PixInsight to get the gradients away, I'm absolutely happy to have this tool at hand. And I think given that it's for free, it's an absolutely no brainer to download it and to have it at hand for any case. And at this point also a very big thank you to Frank Sackenheim and his buddies for coding that, especially for providing it for free. This is absolutely something we shouldn't be taken for granted. And so this was my last video for this year. It was an absolutely amazing experience to start this YouTube channel and at the end of the year to have so many subscribers. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody who subscribed, for everybody who's watching my videos. It's greatly appreciated. I wish you and your families all the best for 2023 and we see each other again in the next year. Until then, clear skies.